Each year this ceremony serves as one of the few times we bring together the entire community. So join me in the spirit of this great school that we share as we recognize the various members of our community by the traditional parade of flags. Representing the class of 2030, Hudson Ross. Representing the class of 2029, Leah Gordon. Representing the class of 2028, Haley Harris. Representing the class of 2027, Will Mayberry. Representing the class of 2026, Hank Etzler. Representing the class of 2025, Kennedy Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise and honor our senior class, the class of 2024, led by Oliver Nyman.
Representing our faculty and staff, please welcome Betsy Carmichael. And finally, please welcome our head of school, Chris Angel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, students, faculty, and staff, good morning and welcome to the new year. It is an honor to stand before you today as the head of school, as we embark on this new year, full of opportunities, hope, and potential. This is actually our 131st year of teaching and learning at Baylor, way longer than any other school around. And I am beyond proud of all that Baylor students and faculty have accomplished throughout our rich history. Convocation, this special ceremony that we have as we begin the school year, is important for us to officially begin the year for each of you to hear that you each have a significant role to play in our community. Regardless of your role, if you're in this room, you are part of Baylor, which is what we mean when we say we are Baylor. And each of us is important in making it the best year that it can be. We are Baylor, this unbelievably special place. And there's really nothing better, I believe, than being a Red Raider, challenging ourselves. I, yeah, we can, we can clap for that. Being a Red Raider is pretty cool. <laughs> challenging ourselves in our classrooms and on our playing fields in the arts, building lifelong friends along the way. However, I don't know if you felt it, but I certainly have. There's an extra special feeling on campus this, this year that makes me feel that this is going to be one that stands out among all those years in our rich history. I've been saying this all summer, but I do passionately believe that this is going to be our best year yet. And I hope that each of you feel this positive energy and momentum as we begin this school year. We are Baylor, 1,079 students strong. 268 of us are in our very first day as Baylor students today. Let's give them a big welcome. We begin in our middle school, starting with our sixth graders. We have 104 new sixth graders. How about we hear from our new sixth graders? Can we have a little energy for our sixth grade? That's pretty impressive, I like it. And we go all the way to the 186 members of this year's senior class. How about we hear from our senior class? At Baylor, we have a richly diverse student body with day students coming from over 125 different schools before beginning Baylor. That's a lot. We are a boarding school with 219 students from 26 different states and 19 countries, including four continents. We are Baylor with over 300 full and part-time faculty and staff members with an unwavering dedication in pushing you out of your comfort zones helping you discover the best versions of yourself, fostering in you, in you both the ability and the desire to make a positive difference in the world. We are Baylor and we are all in this together. This year, we are going to cheer each other on with our academic achievements in many ways, like our own Raiders, debate team, youth and government, our athletic teams who are already in competition. Girls soccer set a great uh, start for us last night with a big win our phenomenal arts programs, and we're going to support each other in all the many other ways around campus um, and around the world that our Baylor experience takes us. Because at Baylor, it's cool to be smart, it's cool to be an artist, it's cool to be an athlete, it's cool to be a humanitarian, it's cool to seek out adventure, and it's really cool to support each other doing all the things that make the Baylor experience. Back to our seniors, 
While I expect everybody in this room to be a leader on this campus in some capacity, I'm really expecting great things from the class of 2024. And I'm already impressed with what I've seen thus far from the senior prefects helping with move in to the organized senior sunrise yesterday to really all the positive energy on campus that I've already seen this morning. I know it's going to be a great year and we're all going to continue to rely on you to help us make it that way. And at the end of our ceremony today, we are all going to sing a very important song to each of us in here, our alma mater. And our seniors are really going to be helping lead us in that. We'll sing it many times over the course of this year. In just a moment, I'm going to ask Peter Fisher, one of our members of the senior class, to come forward for our invocation. However, before he does, I have the privilege of continuing the tradition begun by our founding headmaster, Dr. John Roy Baylor, with the ringing of the actual bell that he rang on the first day of classes back in 1893, representing the official beginning of the school year. The ringing of this bell reinforces Dr. Baylor's values of faith, honor, excellence, and magnanimitas. So, I now formally declare that the 2023-2024 school year is officially open. Thank you and go Big Red. Good morning. My name is Peter Fisher. I'm in class of 2024. Will you please stand and join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, let us be thankful for the opportunity we have to attend Baylor, for, the, for all the knowledge we will gain and all the friends we will make. Thank you for the faculty and administrators that pour into us, teach us, and care for us every day. Grant us with safety on and off the field, quick recall in the classroom, and an open heart in every occasion. Help us to do our very best in every situation. Let us walk in your ways and guide us to make a positive difference in your world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As Mr. Angel mentioned, we have 19 different countries represented at Baylor. At this point, we'd like for our international students to step forward and say a special welcome. Guys? Good afternoon, Baylor. My name is Bruno Coscoyola. I'm a senior boarder from Barcelona, Spain, and well, for new students, bienvenidos a Baylor. Go Big Red. Um, sziasztok! Az én nevem Rendesi Bálint, Érdről, Magyarországról, Hungary. Uh, üdv a Baylorben. Go Big Red, baby. I'm Tomas and here uh, from Santiago, Chile, and go Big Red. Hi, y'all. I'm Prabal. I'm from Hyderabad, India. Uh, Hyderabad, I'm from Hyderabad, India. I'm from Hyderabad, Go Big Red. Uh, hello, I'm Harry McGuire. I'm a junior from London, England, and welcome to Baylor, Go Big Red. Eh, hola, mi nombre es Santiago Domenech, soy de Puerto Rico y es mi cuarto año de escuela secundaria. Bienvenidos a Baylor, Go Big Red. Hello, my name is Luca, I'm from Germany, I'm a junior. Welcome to Baylor, Go Big Red. Hello, I'm Tiger. I'm a freshman from Beijing, China. Baylor and go Big Red! Hi, my name is 
you've just seen, I'm a junior from Canada. Bienvenue à Baylor, go Big Red. Hey guys, my name is Ken. I'm a junior from Lithuania. So you can't take a bill monkey club, go Big Red. Hi, my name is Violet Smith. I'm a freshman. I'm from Bermuda, go Big Red. My name is Luisa. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Brazil. Go Big Red. Hello, I'm Warren from South Korea. I'm a freshman. Uh, Go Big Red. Hi, I'm Karen from Tokyo. I'm a senior reporter. Beira ni Yokoso and Go Big Red. Good morning. My name is Ella Marks. I am a senior boarder from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm so excited to serve as this year's Honor Council Chair. The Honor Code is built into our daily lives as members of the Baylor community. We are able to comfortably leave our belongings in different spaces around campus, complete our schoolwork to the best of our ability, tell the truth even when it is hard, and trust that others around us are doing the same. Trust is one of the greatest gifts of Baylor. Our parents can trust that when they send their children here, they'll be well taken care of and grow as individuals. We can trust ourselves, that our success is well earned, and we can trust each other, that the people around us will have the courage to do the right thing, and that this community will take care of and provide for one another. The Honor Code, which we all pledge to uphold, strengthens our community, running deep within the heart of the school and making it so trust is more than second nature. It is contagious. For many of us, today marks a transition. A new year always does. My encouragement is for you to take the leap and trust this community. It is well worth it. The people around you are ready to help you succeed. This past weekend, I was reminded of the nervous excitement when you are new to Baylor at boarding orientation. There were so many emotions to be felt. I think most of us can relate to that. It can be scary to be somewhere new, whether you live here in Chattanooga or on the other side of the globe. For me, at least, I was very nervous to come here my freshman year. However, when I settled in, I relaxed, trusting that I would be okay. Ultimately, no matter how long you've been at Baylor, you too were able to take that next step and trust that there would be people here to help you find your footing. Now, in my daily life, I am able to trust that the people around me do not lie, cheat, or steal, and I know that they have my best interest at heart. You get what you give. Invest in this community, and it will continue to invest in you. My hope for this year is that we can trust each other Acknowledge that value and let it spread through all aspects of our Baylor experience. Now, please join me in reading the affirmation of the Baylor Honor Code, and you can stand to do that. We, the students of Baylor School, believe that a great school must rest on the foundations of truth and honor, that a lie is the most detestable thing of which a person may be guilty, and truth the greatest virtue which one may possess. We agree to conduct ourselves with the highest degree of truth and honor and to uphold the honor code of Baylor School. The honor system is an understanding that do we not want among us one who will lie, cheat, steal, plagiarize, or falsify information. I understand this principle and I recognize that I shall be expected to live in accordance with it. Thank you. Good morning. In his final address to the students of the Baylor School, Dr. John Roy Baylor wrote that our watchword for life should be magnanimitas. Magnanimitas is a Latin word, and we at Baylor translate this word to mean greatness of spirit. Greatness of spirit is what all of us at Baylor aspire to. Today's speaker is the embodiment of magnanimitas. In her 33 years at the Baylor School, she has taught in both divisions at all levels from sixth grade to post AP. She has led middle schoolers through Disney and DC more times than one can count. And she has coached Baylor's fencing team through it all. Baylor's motto is a mat victoria curum, meaning victory loves care. 
Through care and preparation, Kristen Vines has overcome cancer, is a four-time national fencing champion who has represented the United States of America all over the world, and was named U.S. Fencing's High School Coach of the Year. But most importantly, today's speaker cares for and prepares each of her students to live with magnanimitas as she does every day. Please welcome my friend, Kristen Vines. Thank you, Mrs. Turnbull, for those kind words. Thank you, Mr. Angel, Mr. Wilson, for inviting me. Thank you to the faculty, staff, and the students of Baylor for letting me be here. It is truly an honor to speak with you at this convocation. When I was invited to give this address, as a Latin teacher, I knew that the best topic was obviously our school's motto, Amat Victoria Quran. Unfortunately, a former Latin colleague, Mr. Celepino, gave that exact convocation address in 2017. He did such a good job that no other Latin teacher should ever attempt this speech. Thanks for that, Mr. Celepino. You can Google it later if you want. It's really good. So my next option, obviously, was magnanimitas, the principle of greatness of spirit established by our founder, John Roy Baylor. You hear about that a lot, so I skipped on that one as well. Latin, however, has many great authors who have many great things to say. So today I offer you this line from the poet Ovid. Nec quod fuimus we, sumus we, cross erimus. And for those of you not well versed in Ovid, it reads, roughly translated, what we have been and what we are, we will not be tomorrow. Which leads us to the question, who are we? And the answer is, now I need a little audience participation here. I'm sure you'll know your line. We are, Man. oh, come on now. We are Man. much better. So let's look around us and see who Baylor actually is because there's a lot of people in here. Do you know them all? Do you know some of them? Maybe one or two? So let's see if I can help you spot a potential soulmate. Again, a little audience participation, please. If today is your first day as a Baylor student or teacher, please stand up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's, get, let's dig a little deeper here. If you love the sport that you participate in, stand up. Thank you. If your passion is found in the arts, in music, dance, theater, or studio arts, please stand up. Thank you. If you relish the challenge of each new day, stand up. Nice. Thank you all. And finally, if you are feeling nervous or excited about the year ahead, please stand. <laughs> nice. Thank you, that's good to see. All right, well good then, you know who you are, that's awesome. But think about this, think for a moment, who will you be tomorrow? Who will you be by the end of the year? Who will you be in 10 years? Remember, what we have been and what we are, we will not be tomorrow. Today, you all have dreams and plans. They may be simple, like figuring out your schedule or remembering your Baylor password. They may be long-term, such as getting your driver's license, surviving your AP class, earning a scholarship, or beating the GPS. 
When you have accomplished these things, who then will you be and what will you reach for next? As Fred Rogers, better known as Mr. Rogers said, often when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something. Whilst I was in college back in the dark ages, you know, before cell phones, I did not pursue a typical major. Instead, radically, I only took classes I liked. I ended up, after four years, with a double major in classical studies and art history. This was kind of awkward for my father, who was actually a rocket scientist, but he supported me anyway. When it came time to graduate and to decide on my future course of work, I had quite a quandary on my hands. All the classes I had taken in college, Latin, ancient Greek, history, art history, archaeology, and fencing were fascinating and could lend themselves to lots of different possibilities. And I strove to find a profession that would make me happy and still provide me with regular meals. I became then a teacher and a coach, and I'm very glad I made that choice. Teaching Latin has let me combine so many of the things I find fascinating. The Latin language itself, of course, but also the lives of the people who spoke it, their art, their poetry, and their philosophy. But remember, what we have been and what we are. We will not be tomorrow. Once, not so long ago, I was a competitive fencer, and frankly, I was one of the best in the United States. I had fenced since college, okay? And I couldn't think of a time when my passion for fencing would wane. And then came a knee replacement. I don't recommend those for anyone. Followed by a pandemic, which made driving to Atlanta to train with my coach impossible. Thus, competitive fencing for me seems to have come to an end. As I reached for things to fill the void left by fencing, I began to change. I took up virtual challenges, walking, biking, and stand-up paddling over 4,000 miles in the last few years. I turned to books, voraciously devouring science fiction, mysteries, and, well, history. Through these and through a wonderful British TV show called Time Team, I rekindled an old passion, archaeology. The desire to be an archaeologist, to muck about in the past and learn about ancient Romans in their native environment. Problem is, this is hard to do in Tennessee. I had taken archaeology classes at college. My professor had been an archaeologist in Pompeii, you know, the one that was covered by the volcano? Okay. And she would come into class and just casually drop something on the desk that she had looted, I mean, um, found in Pompeii. And she asked us to identify these things, and we never could. Because who could tell, just by looking, that a piece of fire clay, about the size of an egg and pointed, was a shot from a slingshot that had been used during the siege of the city? I never would have guessed that. I spent a month in Baltimore, Maryland, working at the Walters Art Gallery. During that time, I cataloged ancient Greek pottery. It wasn't glamorous work, and it was hard work, but I got to hold in my hands pieces of pottery that were over 3,000 years old. And it made me wonder about the last people who had held those items. This summer, because of a generous global study grant from Baylor, I had the opportunity to participate in an actual archaeological dig at Hadrian's Wall in England. For two weeks, I worked on unearthing items at the Vindolanda Fort, which had been buried in the first and second century AD, or about 1,900 years ago. Now, the conditions at Vindolanda are known as anaerobic, and this means that items buried there are sealed away from air and bacteria, which caused them to erode and disappear. This means that you could sit next to a pile of mud and you could reach in and you could pull out an actual leather shoe that had been discarded by a Roman whose laces you could still tie, okay? 
you could bring out a posh glass gaming piece that had been dropped the last time the game had been played. Or you could find the entire intact jaw of a cow, still with all its teeth. Maybe that had been someone's barbecue? I don't know. I did all those things. I was the first person to hold those things in my hand in almost 2,000 years. So now I am an archeologist. Who knew that taking those classes back in college would lead to that? Who knows where the things that you enjoy will take you? Have you even discovered the things that will determine your life? I hope not. I hope that you will take this year, your time at Baylor, to explore new things, things you never thought to try. You might like them and you might not, but you will know more about them and you will know more about yourself. And take time as you do this to give grace to those around you. Show kindness to people who are trying something for the first time. We have all been novices who were helped by someone else. In the words of Lewis Carroll from Alice in Wonderland, I knew who I was this morning, but I have changed a few times since then. May your time at Baylor change you, bringing you a better understanding of yourself, of others, and of magnanimitas. And of course, go Big Red. Thank you, Mrs. Vines, so much. At this time, I'm gonna ask uh, choir director Vic Oaks and members of the senior choir step forward, and they're gonna lead us in the alma mater. So please rise and join them in singing our alma mater. <laughs> beautiful day to begin a new school year. Please provide us with courage as we embark on a new exciting journey this year. Continue to lift up, lift up the teachers, give them patience, and continue to give them wisdom and revelation to lead their classrooms to their fullest potential. Lord, give us as students patience with ourselves and one another. Thank you for strength when we are scared, and lastly, empower us when our lights begin to dim. Lord, continue to give Mr. Andrew creative ideas and to enhance our campus and community. As we continue to grow, please guard and protect us. In your name I pray, amen. Before we dismiss, I wanna make uh, sure that we give a special thanks to Ben Spossett and our Baylor Orchestra. Thank you so much for our meeting. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful year. <laughs>